Hello dear friends, how are you? I am Satya Narayan, I am a 2019 batch IPS and today in this video we are going to discuss a very very important topic from the GS3 papers perspective and this topic is directly related to the syllabus and in the syllabus it is mentioned that storage, transport and marketing of the agricultural produce and issues and related constraints. So you must have guessed it correctly that we are going to discuss about the agricultural reforms which have been announced by the finance minister uh, under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan package just last week. Okay, so mainly there were two types of measures. If we divide the entire 11 measures which was pronounced by finance minister, we can divide them into two categories. Okay, so the first one is related to the credit flow to the parts of the agri cultural ecosystem and the creation of infrastructure yani ki jo agriculture ke liye infrastructure vagera ki zarurat hai uske liye for example government has announced that they will uh, create a 1 lakh crore fund for the agricultural infrastructure okay so this is although important but our main focus of this discussion will be on the other three reforms which have been uh, related to the agricultural reforms so first of First of them is the Essential Commodities Act. Government has announced that they will uh, reform this act. Then there is uh, usher in the agricultural marketing reforms by bringing a central legislation to allow farmers to sell their produce to anyone beyond the APMC. So the APMC acts and state governments ke one may amendment karke the farmers can uh, sell their product to anyone with not just in their local APMC Monday. So this is the second step and the third the government announced was that they will bring a legal framework to facilitate contract farming. Okay, that is the direct dealing between the farmers and producers. So these three measures we will discuss them in detail or kaise unse jo hai agricultural reforms possible honge or kis tarike se jo hai efficient value chain banegi isse or jo farmers hai unko better returns milenge or it will also help the uh, doubling of farmers income target for the government okay which government has aimed to achieve by 2022 so now let's start understanding the first measure that is the amendment of the essential commodities act bill so sabse pehle samajhte hain ki what is this uh, act essential commodities act aur iski wajah se jo kaise hain agriculture ko ya overall consumers ko jo hai farmers and consumers dono ko nuksan hua hai so this was a act which was enacted in 1955 and the circumstances this was an act which was enacted in a scarcity era okay so how we will understand that the roots of this bill lies to the defense of india bill which was enacted in 1943 by the britishers and the circumstances there were famines thi, and the second world war just uh, second world war jo hai wo just khatam hua tha us time pe chal raha tha to uski wajah se jo bahut sari scarcity thi agricultural products vagera ho nahi rahe the so jo essential commodities hoti hai uski ek list taiyar kari gayi ki these will be the essential commodities and anyone except the government will not be able to uh, held a stock of these commodities beyond a certain level so in case jo uh, under the essential commodities act hai har cheez pe jo hai uh, stock limits they were enacted okay so by the mid 1960s india was hit by back to back droughts yani ki us time pe sukhe pade the and we all know that uski wajah se jo india ko hai india had to rely on the pl 480 program of united states jahan se humne jo hai wheat ka import kiya but now after 60 to 70 years and mainly due to the green revolution uh, the circumstances have changed today india is the largest exporter of the rice this was a question which was asked previous year in prelims that which of the following countries is the largest exporter of rice so india is the largest exporter of rice uh, it is not very again it may be asked okay so that was the thing and then India is the second largest producer of both wheat and rice and we know that ki jo hamari granaries hoti hain jo under food corporation of India hai waha pe uh, government procure wheat and rice from the farmers and they are lying in the granaries and there was a committee Shanta Kumar committee which was uh, enacted or which was formulated to see how the FCIs can be reformed so the food corporation of India और जो उसका PDS system है procurement करते हैं और फिर उसके बाद में जो आ, PDS system के तहत जो customers को at rational price पे देते हैं जो है ration के price पे so to, uh, to see the reforms in overall that there was a committee named as Shanta Kumar committee and that committee recommended that कि so many uh, um, so much amount of the grains are overlying in the 
ग्रेनरीज तो जो हमारे स्टोरेज सिस्टम है दे आर नॉट सफिशियंट और उसकी वजह से हर साल जो है वो बहुत सारा गेहूं एंड राइस जो है दैट गोट पेरिस्ट खराब हो जाता है ओके okay? so the essential commodities act imposes stock limits on the various commodities by the private players so as i told ki uh, all the essential commodities which are listed under this uh, act beyond a certain limit you cannot keep the st stocks so iski wajah se hua kya hai it has disincentivized the private players from making investment in the farm sector in warehousing and storage to jo bhi private players hain they are they are do not having any incentive unke paas koi profit nahi hai ki wo वेयर हाउसिंग और जो स्टोरेज कैपेबिलिटीज हैं जो इसके लिए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है उसको डेवलप करें एंड एज ए रिजल्ट द कंट्री लेक्स स्टोरेज फैसिलिटीज एंड सो मच ऑफ वीट एंड राइस एंड अदर कॉमोडिटीज गेट वेस्टेड एंड इसकी वजह से जो है देर हैज बीन a lack of integrated value chain and we know that integrated value chain is very very important because uh, from फार्म यानी कि जहां पे एग्रीकल्चरल फार्म्स होते हैं वहां से जो प्रोड्यूसर या जो प्रोड्यूसर से जो कंज्यूमर तक पहुंचने का जो सिस्टम है अगर उसके बीच में जो वैल्यू चेन होगा इफ इट इज नॉट एफिशिएंट सो द इंटरमीडिएटरीज विल बी रिपिंग द बेनिफिट्स एंड नाइदर द फार्मर्स विल बी गेटिंग बेनिफिट्स एंड इट विल बी वेरी कॉस्टली फॉर द कंज्यूमर्स बिकॉज द कॉस्ट इन्वॉल्व इन दिस वैल्यू चेन विल बी वेरी हायर सो दिस हैज बीन थॉटेड बाय दिस इसेंशियल कमोडिटीज एक्ट now when the farmers they bring their produce to the market after the harvest there is often a glut glut means oversupply so when the farmers reap the products from their farm jab wo kaatte hain fasal aur jo bhi apna produce wagera hota hai usko market mein leke aate hain to us time pe oversupply hoti hai aur jo prices hain wo fall down kar jati hai hum dekhte hain ki kisano ko jo hai wo sahi mulya nahi milta hai so it hurts the farmers and during the lean season the prices start flaring up for the consumers jo consumers hai unko ke liye jo hai wo prices badhne lag jati hai so due to the essential commodities act uh, both the sides lose because of the lack of storage facilities because private players jo hai they are not incentivized to keep the storages okay so agar jo bhi essential commodities hongi ya jo bhi other commodities agar unke stocks nahi honge to jab lean season hoga us time pe prices jo hai flare up kar jayenge and it will be a disincentive for the consumers so we see that this act was neither in the interest of farmers nor in the interest of consumers now the present amendment government has said that they will rationalize it bahut sari cheeze hain jaise ki cereals edible oils pulses onions potatoes in sab ko wo jo hai wo is list se hata denge aur uske alawa jo uh, stock limits jo hoti hai unme bhi ye reforms kar denge okay so it will provide more choices to the farmers and this amendment if implemented in the right spirit because everything has to be implemented properly otherwise there is no profit or benefit of any reforms so it will remove this road block jo storage capability and the warehousing mein jo investment hai private sector ka this road block will be taken over by this uh, particular amendment and both the farmers and the consumers will be bringing in the relative price stability so both will get benefited out of it and it will also prevent waste of agri produce which happens due to the lack of storage facility so i think this is clear now we move towards the second measure so the government has announced that uh, they will bring a central law although we know that agriculture it is a uh, state subject okay so the states can enact any laws and it is the center which makes model laws okay for example the apmc model act hai usi tarike se jo state hai sorry स्टेट्स को जो है वो सेंटर के जो लो होता है उसके अकॉर्डिंग अपने अपने स्टेट्स में अमेंडमेंट्स करने होते हैं सो द गवर्नमेंट विल ब्रिंग अनदर सेंट्रल लो टू अलाउ फार्मर्स टू सेल एनीवन एनी ऑफ द फार्मर्स कैन सेल टू एनीवन आउटसाइड द एपीएमसी यार्ड सो द प्रेजेंट सिस्टम इज दैट कि कोई भी फार्मर जो है इट हैज टू रजिस्टर विद द लोकल एपीएमसी मंडी एंड दे हैव टू सेल देयर प्रोड्यूस टू द दैट लोकल एपीएमसी मंडी ओके सो द प्रेजेंटली फार्मर्स आर बाउंड टू सेल देयर प्रोड्यूस ओनली टू द लाइसेंसेस इन द एपीएमसीज एंड देन द एपीएमसी मार्केट से बिकम मोनोपोलिस्टिक उसकी वजह से क्या होता है कि जो जिस एरिया में रजिस्टर्ड है उसी एरिया में ही सिर्फ अपने प्रोड्यूस बेच सकता है और होता ऐसा है कि कोई भी एक एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोड्यूस होता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल व्हीट तो उस पर्टिकुलर एरिया जो है उस पूरी बेल्ट में व्हीट ही व्हीट होगा उसकी वजह से जो फार्मर्स है उनको अच्छे प्राइसेस नहीं मिलते हैं और यू कैन से ग्राउंड नेट तो जहां ग्राउंड नेट की खेती ज्यादा होती है वहां की जो लोकल मंडी होगी वहां पर ग्राउंड नेट की प्राइसेस उनको ज्यादा नहीं मिलेगी सो और जो इंटरमीडिएशन की जो कॉस्ट होती है वो भी काफी हाई होती है क्योंकि आप विदाउट लाइसेंस आप नहीं बेच सकते हैं या फार्मर्स जो है वो अपना प्रोड्यूस 
सिर्फ उन्हीं लोगों को बेच सकते हैं जिन लोगों ने लाइसेंस लिया हुआ होता है ओके सो द प्रोपोस्ड लॉ विल ओपन मोर मार्केटिंग सोर्स फॉर द फार्मर्स एंड दे हेल्प देम गेटिंग द बेटर प्राइसेस नाउ व्हेन दिस लॉ विल बी इनेक्टेड सो द फार्मर्स दे विल बी एबल टू सेल देयर प्रोड्यूस टू एनी एनीवन एंड वी आल्सो नो दैट द गवर्नमेंट इज ट्राइंग टू इंप्लीमेंट दिस ई नाम प्रोजेक्ट सो दिस विल बी अ कंप्यूटराइज्ड सिस्टम जहां पे जो बायर्स हैं दे कैन डायरेक्टली कांटेक्ट टू द फार्मर्स और they can directly make purchases and buys so this will help the farmers in getting better prices and also this will remove the barriers in the interstate trade particularly abhi kya hota hai ki interstate trade jo hai wo bahut kam hota hai so once this uh, reform is made the barriers will be removed and it will facilitate the movement of agri goods that From one region to another region, so generally ऐसा होता है कि एक region में जो prices होती है वो same commodity की for example onion वो काफी कम होती है दूसरे area में काफी ज्यादा होती है supply and demand के हिसाब से so when this bill will be enacted, so there will be a special integration of the prices यानी कि जो prices है वो more or less same रहेगी हर जगह पे तो this will be beneficial for all the uh, stakeholders. and then this will also help the farmers of the regions with surplus produce to get better prices and consumers of the regions with shortage lower price okay so this is a very common uh, point and the india will have one common market finally for the agri produce so if this uh, bill is properly implemented then then we will be having only one market and government is trying to implement this e nam project so this is a very important upsc may ask this question in the prelims regarding the e nam project Uh, so you must know about it now we come to the third major which is the government announced and that is the legal framework for contract farming so contract farming is a very important concept uh, from the point of view mains as well as prelims upsc has already asked this question in i think 2016 yes 2016 they asked a question about contract farming so 3 4 years ho gaye they can again ask this question and they can also ask a question with respect to the farmers producers organization because government has been saying about this constantly in their budget speeches so we will see about what are the farmers producers organization and how they will be helpful in the next slide now let's let's first focus on the legal framework which government has proposed for the contract farming so government has said that they will bring a legal framework yani ki they will enact a bill or enact an act to enable the farmers to engage with the processors aggregators large retailers towards uh, directly so jo bhi processors hain yani ki jo uh, agri processors hain and aggregators jo hain ya traders jo hain they will be directly able to deal with the farmers and they will be able to decide the prices before the crop is grown okay so for example now the kharif season kharif season is coming so these uh, processors and aggregators they will contact directly to the farmers and they will decide the prices for a particular commodity for example say potato so jo potato farmers honge these uh, processors and etc jo bhi large jo quantity mein khareedne wale jo buyers hain they will ask the farmers to uh, grow particular amount of potato and they will say that we will buy this potato at a particular price jo pehle se fix ho jayega so is tarike se the farmers will get assurance of price unko aisa nahi hoga ki agar jo over production ho gaya to market mein jo unki prices fall down ho jayegi and this will help the farmers at the time of sowing and they will also help them take the cropping decisions to jis crop ke unko acche profit mil rahe honge wo usi crop ko grow karenge otherwise generally abhi kya hota hai presently aisa hota hai ki suppose is saal jo hai onions ke bhav bahut zyada ho gaye so in the next season of the onion growing farmers will grow only onion okay in their farms and what will happen is that next year jo onion hai uski over supply ho jayegi and then there will be the Uh, very fall down in the prices of the onions. So again, uh, this will be a repeated cycle. एक साल प्राइसेज ज्यादा होगी दूसरे साल कम होगी फिर ज्यादा फिर कम इस तरीके से So जो Indian farmers है वो इसी cycle में फंसे हुए हैं So once the government allows them to do the contract farming, it will be really helpful for them and would also help them to discover the real prices of a particular commodity. Okay, and it will minimize the market risk for the farmers. So these are the three important announcements made by the government. Now we will see what is the role which can be produ- uh, played by the farmers producers organization. So farmers producers organization are like organizations uh, in which many of the farmers will be enrolled. So एक organization होगा उसमें जो बहुत सारे farmers हैं they will be enrolled, okay? And they will be bringing their produce to this organization and this organization will directly deal with the uh, 
buyers okay so it will act as a seller and it will give the farmers a bargaining power because uh, unit is strength okay so the big buyers like processors and exporters and organized retailers they will feel difficult to contact the individual farmer individual farmer se contact karna aur usse jo hai uh, like because uska jo produce hoga wo bhi small quantity mein hoga so it will be become difficult for them so in this case the farmers producers organization can be really helpful because they will create a scale koi bhi commodity hogi usko zyada quantity mein they can aggregate and for that the building farmers producers organization will be based on the local commodity interest so for example in one particular area there is agriculture of groundnut so there will be a uh, farmers producers organization regarding to the groundnut okay and then they will directly be dealing with the oil mills or whatever other uh, processors are there so this will ensure that there is a uniform quality the transaction costs are lowered and it will improve the bargaining powers of the farmers vis a vis the large buyers so generally the farmers when they are individual they do not enjoy much bargaining power but once they are united they are formed an organization so they will have more bargaining power the government in one of the earlier budgets they also emphasized on formation of the farmers producers organization so this is also an important concept with respect to the mens i think upsc may ask this question and now jo nabard jo hai it becomes the duty of them to provide Uh, loans at very affordable cost so generally presently it happens that these farmers producers organizations jo bhi hain they are getting in, uh, loans from the microfinance institutions and they are getting at it at a very high cost that is around 18% to 20% to 22% so this is a very high interest rate uh, at the present time farmers get the loans at 7% okay so this same rate at the same rate nabard should provide loans to the farmers producers organization so it will help the overall farmers okay so this is the important role which can be uh, played by the farmers producers organization along with the steps taken by the government now let's conclude this article and uh, this policy discourse of the government for the several years has been to bring amendments yeah bring reforms but there were political compulsions and because of that the government was not able to push through these reforms for example like getting the indian agriculture out of the clutches of the apmc jo apmc mandis hain ya fir bringing reforms in the essential commodities act or uh, encouraging the private investment in the various parts of the food chain so the government wanted to bring these reforms but they were not able to do be- one because the agriculture is a state subject and another one is that there were different political compulsions so now this uh, covid 19 lockdown and the overall economic crisis it has a provided opportunity to the government to bring reforms so the government should not let go this moment to reform the indian agriculture uh, marketing system and one of the leading agricultural economist of our country ashok gulati he has written this article and he has said that this could be the 1991 reforms for the indian agriculture so the 1991 we saw the major economic reforms for the manufacturing and the service sector the agriculture was not a focus part of that reforms so ashok gulati says that this can be a 1991 moment for the indian agriculture if all these uh, three steps which has been suggested by the governments regarding the essential commodity act and the contract law or the contract farming and other than that uh, this uh, reforms to the apmc act okay so these are the measures announced by the government which can be really helpful for the indian agriculture and i hope that you have understood these reforms and the intricacies of these small announcements made by the government so i hope that you liked this video please uh, click the like button share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel Thank you have a nice day happy learning